This past weekend, I hosted a virtual retreat for over 90 people that were in attendance. And during that retreat, we had a series of presentations. This is one of the presentations by Pat Jennings, who is a brilliant art quilter. And she talked about going from being a traditional quilter to going to be to becoming an art quilter. So I hope you enjoy this presentation by Pat Jennings. Um, I, uh, what I was saying is that if people want to know, well, what's the difference? If you're a quilter, what's the difference? Because you're all of you are working with fabric of one kind or another. And to me, my definition is that both are very respected uh, sections of quilting. But art quilts are generally those that you have made your own patterns, your own innovations, whereas traditional or classical quilting is more from classic designs or patterns. Now, that's the difference for me. And I've done some of both. When I started, I started based on the quilts that I had seen, which were all traditional. And uh, as most of us starting into something, we'll pick the prettiest, but the most difficult thing to try to do. And my first real quilt was a Hawaiian uh, emblems or those designs. And I literally applied a bunch of those and my mother took mercy and quilted it for me. Uh, so, uh, I have done both things, and then I, I met some friends who were doing innovative things with fabric, and I got the bug, and so that's how I got started, was their influence on me. I think it's really important to exhibit your work. I think it, if, you, if you've done something you're pleased about, that not exhibiting is like writing a beautiful song but never ever playing it or never having it played and that's my uh way of thinking so i can't really explain how exhibiting helps all i know is it just does um uh, how many of you another question have started out when you were little with coloring books I did. You, you, your goal was to use pretty colors, but to stay within the lines. How many was were given a blank sheet of paper and told to draw? Well, it's kind of like making that transition from a coloring page to a blank page in terms of how you have to think about it and what you're going to plan to do with your drawing or your coloring page. And it's a tough transition, it really is. But my suggestions are to start small. Uh, there's a lot of fear in it. Believe it or not, you're scared to death to do something you've never really done before. And so just pretend you're not you're not coloring in the lines anymore. You're on your own now. And it's a freeing thing at times. Other times it's just maddening. But that's what we do as quilters. I think that they are the the class in high school should be to make a small quilt because you are required to problem solve the whole way through. And I think that's what we need more of in our schools is how to problem solve. So anyway, I'll keep my yak in brief. And at the end, I will promise I will allow for many questions. Now I'm going to attempt to show you the work that's out. This is in my Florida room. Uh, so we've got pretty good light out here. And then I'll proceed through the rest of the house. Okay. The first, okay, this is the first piece that I wanted you to see. It's called Kentucky Wonders. And it's one of my favorite flowers or zinnias and they grow beautifully here in Kentucky and I think in many, many states, maybe not far west and maybe not real south, but this one has been entered in a contest 
and it won first place in a show, Kentucky Wonders. And I'll move on to the next piece I want you to see. And I heard last night there is a woman who was doing English paper piecing. And I wanted you to see how I handled uh -oh, this particular piece. It's, you know, it's a bit like featuring the little woman on the inside. And that happens to be a tilde fabric. And I really had fun figuring it out. And just so it happened, I had a frame that would work. The next group of, of pieces I want you to see are these uh, journal quilts. I don't know how well you can see them. Can you? Yes, we can. Okay. They are nine of these. These are called journal quilts. And the International Quilt Association uh, released a challenge a few years ago to make one piece printer paper size per month for nine months. And these were shown at the Houston show. I was really proud of this collection. It was the best. I participated in that like several years, but uh, that was my favorite one. Then many years ago, I made these little tiny pieces. And this is what I think newbies would have fun doing. It's just making little things and kind of getting yourself warmed up in trying new and innovative things. Now, I'm going to walk to the other room and I'm going to try my best not to uh, make you be sick. Okay? Okay. This piece I'm going to show you is one of my favorites. It is an amaryllis. And when I, my father was alive, he sent me an amaryllis bulb at Christmas. And I delighted in those. And they are so gorgeous. And I've made, I think this is my third quilt of the amaryllis. And I did paint of amaryllis at one point. Okay. Stephen, let me know if I need to lower or heighten my screen, okay? You might this, to, uh okay. Lower a this, little bit on this one. This one is a newbie. Let me see where I am on this. Yeah, okay, that's all right. It's okay. This is a newer piece I just made a few months ago, and it's called My Grandmother's Screen Door. And I have so many fond memories of her and this back door. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen old timey screen doors, but can you see where that patch is on it? Yes. Well, this is what her screen door looked like. And there were always little frogs at, at her house. And we loved to catch frogs and stuff. You know, we were really adventuresome children. Country, grew up in the country. Okay. Now, I'm going to take you to the living room. And I'll start with this particular piece. No, no, let me see. I don't think I can get the full scope of it. Let's see. Now, that's a better, but I'll get, do a close-up here in a minute. This is, an, is made from oriental cottons, and it is in the shape of a kimono. A friend of mine gave me the dragons that are at the top of the piece. I'll come up closer now. Those dragons were really uh, in bad shape. And I was fortunately able to restore them. And there was a hole right in the middle. And that's why that little piece got put on. I've learned the tricks of the trade on, on antique fabric. This particular quilt, I call a meditational quilt because it has writing on it. God is love, gratitude, love, prosperity, harmony, 
and on and on. Be still and know. Namaste, stillness. And so there are words above each one of the pieces on the bottom section. This was a loving piece to make, and it was not hard at all. It's made in three sections. So, so you're making three mini quilts plus the header up here. Now, I don't know why I'm married to these kimonos, but I am. And this one was made for, let me step back here. Let me step back. Okay. That one is made from silk. And it is the same pattern as the previous kimono, except just smaller. And I practice my machine uh, stitching, quilt stitching on it. And I decided to do it in gold metallic. And I've got a clue for you. If you use gold metallic in the bottom, look, uh -oh, look what happens on the bottom. It, my, for some reason, my machine loved both metallic on top and in the bobbin. I didn't know that until I tried it on this piece. This is a feminist piece, and I'll tell you why. You see those little shoes up there? Those were considered beautiful when the women would uh, get their little feet to go into that kind of a shoe. And so the the purpose of the quilt is to show the expectations of women over the years. And to the title is, what is beauty and who decides? Okay. Next, I will try to get you over this way and not make you too sick. This is a piece that was uh, seen, it was shown in Houston and Paducah, and it's two baby robins, or two kind of uh, little, you know, not tiny baby robins, but they've just left their nest. And uh, the fabric on the interior is hand dyed. I got into this dying process which is a whole new avenue I mean it's a whole separate uh work a uh, uh, hobby I guess you'd say than quilting but the birds were worked off canvas with heavy heavy um uh I the word leaves me but it'll come back Anyway, I put it, I starched it until you could hold the fabric. It would stick, you know, it would stick straight out. It wouldn't have any give at all. It was just starched to death. And then I put interfacings underneath of that. And I, it, the birds are all fabric, except for a few little black, maybe some brown pieces to accentuate the birds yeah so this has uh, been a favorite of almost everyone and it's called tweet okay this piece right here i am so happy about it i have got fallen in love with scraps and i adore this piece because it's scraps i have done what they call in the books they call it no tan and that means you not only excuse me accentuate the um positive but where i cut out this section i put that over in that section for example i hope i'm explaining this well enough and this I cut this out of a piece of that I made of scraps and put it used, well, I cut it out of here and then I put it up there. And so it was so fun. And I did different kinds of quilting in each one of the, of the blocks. 
Now, let's see. I think this is, well, that's the newer piece. Let me show you this one. I think that, you know, I have to get way back from it. This one is called Tribal Spirits. I took the Sue Benner class. I not only loved the class, but I fell in love with her. And I did this irregular size, which I'm kind of getting good at. But you see, I'm getting up close now. And I hope that you can see not only the pieces of fabric, but the quilting. Tribal spirit. The next is a familiar site, both in Canada and the U.S., of the beloved uh, leaf called a ginkgo. And again, I used the skills to cut one piece out and place it somewhere else to create balance. And this piece also is part silk and part cotton. But when you look up close, and some, and hey, and some polyester uh, up in here, that was my idea to put the mushrooms. They're upside down, but yeah, who cares? And that piece, uh, well, I don't know that I'd ever try to sell that piece. I'm showing the pieces that I'm not, I've not sold or not have not offered for sale. I do have an Etsy store where I have about 60 pieces, but the things I'm keeping at here at my home, most of them are not for sale. Here's a piece I just finished and I'm not, I love how it worked out. But I hope you can see, I got to get back so you can see the whole thing of it. I hope you can see there's a there's something I wish I had done on this piece. And I don't know if you can see it. I have to get further and further and further back. Uh, I, I now, after I've hung it up, I see what I needed to do. And I'll ask you at the end if you have recommendations for this piece. I hand quilted it in the canvas style, and it is made from case facet fabric using the lights at the top, the mediums on the side, and the darks on the right side. Okay, now I'm going to take you, I think. I think uh, this is the last piece I'm going to show you today. So I'll try not to make you sick. Oh, I forgot to turn. Okay, here we go. And, and this piece, you Texans might know what this is. It is the most beautiful flower, but it grows on the leaves and stalks of very poisonous plants. It's called loco weed. And the name of this piece is Jimson, because that's also the name of this weed or flower. The blooms are gorgeous. And I have made this piece. I took a class with Katie Pasquini Masochist, and she taught this three size way of doing things. You see, this is the biggest one in the background. And this is the medium size over here. And this is the smallest size. So in a way, you're making panels of different sizes of the same thing, and then you assemble them. And I thank you all so much for watching and looking at my quilts. I will quilt quickly take you to my sewing studio now. 
And while Pat is doing that, getting herself re-situated, if anybody has any questions, uh, you can ask her now. Remember, you'll need to unmute yourself. Um, and please identify who you are when you're asking the question, because I have Pat in the spot yeah. at the moment, and she won't be able to necessarily see you. Okay. Well, for the last couple of things, this is my sewing studio. This is what I'm excited about doing now. And I hope today I'll complete this. It's something I've never tried. I mean, I love doing things with strings and it's truly a scrappy and I love it. This piece here, I don't know where I'm going with it. It is just, too, I mean, it's too much. Um, started as a mystery quilt, did not like the mystery quilt when it was completed. So I'm trying to come up with a different variation of it that I will like. So this is it. Now, it this is my studio is kind of, it, it's sort of like what it is, but sometimes it's worse. So I will now be open for questions. Okay, Mar Marianne oh. has a question. What, Marianne? Yeah. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Just beautiful quilt. Um, oh. Do you ever, have you ever considered teaching a class? I do teach. I've taught a lot of classes um, in Florida and in Kentucky. Yeah, I do teach. How about online or Zoom or anything? I haven't even thought of it. I, well, I did for my cousin. I think I could probably do some of my more simple designs on Zoom. I do. I think yeah. I could. I think uh, this piece I'm working on right now, oh, it's so fun and it's so easy. It looks really hard, but it's not. And see, that's where I am now. I am 76 years old. And I don't hanker to make pieces that will go to a national show anymore. Yeah. Um, I did that, and uh, like they say, I did it. I got the T-shirt, and then I took the T-shirt back. So <laughs> now I'm doing uh, much, I'm doing fun things just for me. But yes, I would consider doing a Zoom class. I don't know if I have the right cameras and stuff, though. Okay, so, I'll talk. To, I'll talk to Stephen about that later. So Kristen has a question for you. What, Christian? Yes, the series of um, pieces that you had. It looked like about eight or nine of them across yes. the top there. What's yes, the process nine. that you did to put those together? Well, I work from my hand-dyed fabric, and I took um, like a drawing pad, and I made the eight by eight and a half by eleven shape, mm -hmm. and then within the size requirement, I did my drawings. And they oh, were, uh -huh. you you took you took a drawing and then you cut it apart and then you yes put it on the fabric yeah. and then put it together. Fantastic. Your work you make, is you make your own cartoon of those things. And I did those and I was in Florida help helping with my folks. And um I had more time that week and I did those in a week. Oh my. And it was so much fun. Of course, I was relieved to get through, but I also had a deadline to get them to Houston on time. Okay. Okay, so oh, they're beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. So the next question is from Julie Moffel. Go ahead, Julie. Make sure you unmute yourself. Hi, Pat. Um, I was just wondering, you mentioned you had an Etsy store. And for those of us who would like to see more of your work, what is the name of your Etsy store? It is all one word, Pat Jennings Art. No spaces. Pat Jennings Art. And Thank when you. I, when I have tried to go there, like I'm a customer, sometimes I have to put that in maybe two times before the before they find my my slot. But that's all it is. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Does anybody else have a question for Pat? Just jump right in here if you do. Oh, Diane has one. 
and then Heidi. Hey, Diane. Hi, my name is Diane Buchanan. I'm a Canadian. I live in the UK. Uh, wonderful, absolutely beautiful um, quilts that you presented. But I'm, I'm, I wonder if you can just elaborate on why you think that we need to show at one point in our quilting journey. Well, I don't know how to explain it because there's something that happens internally. And it's not anything about winning a ribbon. Some people are so competitive, they want to win that ribbon. Well, not, you know, forget that. That might be, you know, like the cherry on top of the ice cream. But if you would, were to win a ribbon, but the main thing is that you feel that you have allowed other people to enjoy your work. And they do, just like you have enjoyed mine. Uh, there's something that's very uplifting. It's very affirming. And uh, like I said before, it's like writing a really beautiful song and never showing it. It's a shame not to show your beautiful work whether it's traditional, by pattern, or of your own design. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And another question up here is from Heidi. Hey, Heidi. Hey there. What I was wondering was, especially for your botanical works, do you start with an image, a photograph? Are yeah. you an artist in that you can draw? In order sometimes, to yeah, sometimes you kind of need to do a little drawing, but you don't have to be a good drawer to do this. Uh, you do make a, I make a cartoon of those, you know, bigger ones, and I then try to uh, I use a photo. Usually, I I can't work out of my head. Some people can. I always have to have a photo to reference to, and. Um, like those robins, you know, I saw a picture and then there were really, when I saw the picture, there were three robins and I decided two was a better uh, choice in that piece. Usually three and fives are better, but in that piece, I decided two would be workable, but I saw them and then I drew them, the shapes myself and, uh, I have, I started out as an art major in college and I soon figured out art majors had two hour classes and then you had at least two to four hours of homework. And I decided that, you know, I was a kid and I decided that was too much. And that also, I didn't think I could make a living as an art major so I switched to another oh highly lucrative field social work so <laughs> anyway I retired from the state of Kentucky as a social worker and after that I did play therapy with children who had been neglected and abused and I think that's some of my best work but when I retired I knew what I was going to do and I didn't miss a beat trying new things and going to classes and learning techniques. And there's a whole world out there. And I'm still finding things that are exciting that I've never done before. Thank um, you. Lizette has a question for you. Hi, Lizette. Good morning. Good From morning. one social worker to another. Thank All you. All right. Yay yeah, for social workers. Oh. My question is, what is your process in construction? Is it usable? Is it all at the same? What's your technique? It depends on the what the piece really calls for to pull it off. I use a lot of Wonder Under, but some of my pieces, I just, uh, I do some raw edge stuff. And I just lay it down and start sewing and do the best I can not to pucker it. Um, the best thing to do is, if you don't want puckers, is to wonder under or use some kind of product like that. Uh, let me think a minute. What did I do? Definitely on the, of the Zinnia, big piece Zinnias, I definitely used that on there. And some of this work was pieced. 
and some of it was applique. And I would go around with um, set and stitch on a lot of things. But my favorite stitch to applique with, with is called the blanket stitch. Yeah, but yeah, I do. I use Wonder Under, and sometimes I just wing it. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone for Pat? No, well, I want to thank Pat for showing us your beautiful creations. When I asked you to present, I really thought people would definitely enjoy your work because your art, your work, and it is art, uh, is truly, truly beautiful. I wish I could do what you do uh, with that because it's amazing. Thank you, Steve. And, and you know what? I see you, some of you, especially on Wednesdays. And uh, I see that some of you all are just winging it on some of these patterns you buy. And it makes me think, ah, they are budding art quilters. They are solving more problems. The only difference in using a pattern of someone else's making and your own is there are a few more problems. But even with a pat bought pattern, you're going to have some problems to solve. So I encourage you to start really simple. You know, some of the thing, the biggest thing is your fear. You know, like if you've never colored outside of the color pages or if you ever drawn on a blank piece of paper, that's a bit, bit threatening also. So there's a lot of fear in there. Will people like this? Will I waste my fabric? Like that's a big concern for most of us if we should waste a little bit of fabric. And um, let's see, what else was I going to say? The fears about it. You know, what 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 will other people think if I start doing this? So there are a lot of fears and you just have to stare those down and stare them in the face and say, now I have enough confidence in myself to give this a whirl. And so uh, you can do it. Well, thank you, Pat, for all of that. This was- Thank wonderful. you, thank you. Thank, thank you, Pat. You. Oh, fantastic. fantastic.